in verses 5 through 12. And uh, I always give a giving exhortation before I minister the word and before we receive an offering. So th why should we be any different now? So I think this is really good. This, this is something that the Lord ministered to me. God has been dealing with me about my cheapness, about my withholding spirit. And this stuck out to me. This is in Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 5. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because we have, we have brought no bread. Do you not understand or remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the, of the four thousand, and how many large baskets you took up? How is it you do not understand that I do not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine or the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So first of all, what is the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that Jesus was warning the church about? The teaching of the Pharisees was legalism and being so, so uh, uh, wanting to look good outside that we neglect the inside. Uh, it's not just outward conformity to rules. It's where the heart is at that is the most important thing. And then the, the, the thing that he was warning about the Sadducees, the Sadducees, the, the leaven of the Sadducees they could seep into the church, is to deny the supernatural. The Sadducees were against, they didn't believe in angels, they didn't believe in the supernatural at all. And there's a tendency of the church to push out the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit from the church, because he's like that embarrassing relative that comes up, comes in, and you don't know what he's going to say, and he, and, he, and he could just do something weird, and we're not really sure what's going to happen. And so, and so a lot of pastors who are control freaks, you know, myself, I have a little good control issues myself, you know, we, we don't want to relinquish control to the Holy Spirit. So, so he says, beware, be careful that you don't push out the Holy Spirit, yeah. and you don't become so outwardly, you know, conformed that you're not inward, there's no inward love of God. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so, but when he told them this, they immediately, they started thinking, we didn't bring enough bread. We, you know, immediately, when, when uh, these, these things, these crises that, that currently is going on, we don't have enough. We didn't bring enough bread. And then Jesus had to remind them, don't you remember when we didn't have enough before? And, and I multiplied the bread and the fish. Don't you remember? I am more than enough. I, I, I'm going to take care of you. I'm not, since one of my promises all of a sudden out the door because there's a, a pandemic going on. Since, since when are the promises of his provision to be, to be gone? So there's a lack mentality in them. And, and, and we are just like them. And, and we, uh, we all of a sudden see what we don't have instead of the blessings of what, of what uh, and remembering what Jesus did. Tuesday I came home from church, or excuse me, well, I was working Tuesday at the church, and I came home, and there was, there was a, a loaf of whole wheat bread and toilet paper sitting <laughs> wow. on my cupboard. So, I, so, you know, you know who you are, God bless you, you know who did that. And, uh, but I was just, I was just like, wow, thank you, Jesus, you know, that extra toilet paper, whole wheat bread, because those were, we went to Meyer, you know, and, and we couldn't, there was no toilet paper, there was no paper products, and the bread, amazingly enough, I mean, everybody's on these different keto diets, but all of a sudden there's a famine. Everybody wants bread, you know. <laughs> I don't understand, you know. Keep with your diet. Stop eating any <laughs> bread. Okay, so that's it. So giving in three ways, give a pie, mail it in, or drop it off. And let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for uh, this, this giving church that uh, instead of thinking of, of lack, we're looking to sow seeds wherever we can in people's lives around us. Help us to see the needs around us and to be able to, to give into those needs. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So if she's... Oh, okay, so as we're taking up, go ahead um, and take up the offering. Uh, oh, no, we're not so we... Oh, okay. All right. All right. So... Um, we are Hastings Assembly of God. We're going live this morning, and we're also recording this. 
and you came right in on the middle of a tithe exhortation, so that's okay. But I wanted you to know who we who we are. This is Pastor Al Leonhardt, and I'm Pastor Nicole Leonhardt. And welcome to our Sunday morning, yeah, live. What do we call this? <laughs> live stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this part is not edited. We're having lots of fun, learning lots of new things. And uh, Pastor Al has a cool lesson from King Jehoshaphat. So be blessed as you listen in. Thank you for that. That was very nice. Um, so, if you have a Bible, turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to look at uh, lessons from Jehoshaphat. And while I'm going there. So, the stories of the Bible, whether they're in the New Testament or the Old Testament, uh, a lot of, of, of uh, the criticism of Christianity is that it's not applicable or it's not relative to my life. How do I use these stories? How does it apply to me and today? Well, you're going to see how this story from the Old Testament applies exactly to today and exactly to our lives. And the, the, uh, the stories of the Bible, they still apply to life today. Listen to these two verses. This is Romans 15, 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And this one is 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. So it is applicable. The Old Testament stories, a lot of people just want to get rid of the Old Testament, just read the New Testament. It applies, according to, to, the, to the writing of New Testament scriptures, the Old Testament applies to our life. And those exa there's examples there that can help us. Okay, now I want to, before I get into this, I just want to say God wants you to be at peace. He wants you to be at peace. Now, I'm going to read five scripture verses, and I'm doing this on purpose, back to back. Because I believe in the power of God's word. I believe that the word of God has power to go ahead and grab a hold of the anxiety of our hearts and pull us into peace. Okay, this one. First uh, Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Isn't that good? This one, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace, he's the Lord of it. He's, that's where yeah. peace comes from. Yeah. He's the Lord of peace himself. Give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. This is Isaiah 26.3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. And the last one, Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Amen. So what we want to do right now, we want to let the peace of God rule. Rule, yeah. Right? Yes. So, yeah. so that means that we have to give peace permission. Mm. We have to make a choice to allow peace to rule. Fear and anxiety and trepidation, and let the peace of God rule. Father, we just we just let the peace of God rule in this place. The peace of God rule in the hearts of us as believers today. In the name of Jesus, because you're the Prince of Peace, you're the Lord of Peace. We want you to rule, rule the day, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so in keeping with tradition, we are going to. Uh, uh, some traditions are not bad. Uh, we are going to do our little confession, and if you have your Bible, uh, it, it, just so you don't you don't think that I'm breaking the rules at home or on, on the video, there's only a dozen people here, and we're all six feet apart except for the families. Okay, so I just want to point that out. And we're all family. Yeah, yeah. we're all family, anyways. Says so this is my this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I, will be taught Today I will be taught the Word of God. The Word of God. 
I boldly confess. I boldly confess. My, mind My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Heart is receptive. I, will I will never be the same. I am about to receive, about to receive. the incorruptible, incorruptible. indestructible, indestructible. ever-living seed, ever seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, be the same. never, never, never. never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Okay, so good. So, we want to look at, uh, just very quickly, about some things about this, this uh, Jehoshaphat. Now, be before we get into verse chapter 20, and what's happening here, is the first thing says, and it happened after this, that the people of, of Moab, after what? The kingdom was at peace. Things were going good. Kind of like our country was going good. You know, things were at peace. The economy was booming. I mean, uh, my, my stocks were doing really good. People's, <laughs> people's retirement funds were like, woo this is really doing good. I'm going to retire nice. Right? And all of, all of a sudden, this, this smackdown starts happening. And uh, so what happens here was that Moab and the people of Ammon and the others with them, besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. So this, this outside threat of three, a confederacy of three nations, an overwhelming number of, of enemy was coming in. It was, it was beyond what they could handle. One of those nations alone they could handle easily. But now this was beyond their capabilities. Come on. Now, the United States is you know, a, a, the only superpower, really, in the world. And, and nobody would mess with us militarily, right? But, you know, there are threats that are beyond our technology. Yeah. There are threats that are beyond our military might. There are things that can happen that are beyond our control. You are never truly at, 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 in full control, yeah. right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. We all, no matter how rich you are, how prosperous you are, how, how much you, you get the best medical, you get the best everything, we are still vulnerable. And we need to trust God and to have faith in the Lord. Right? Yes, yes. And fear can come. Fear can overwhelm us at any time because of our humanity, our mortality, and our vulnerability. So here we are. These three armies are coming against Jehoshaphat. And let's, let's keep reading. Then, then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you and from beyond the sea from Syria, and from uh, Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout Judah. So, it's, you know, it's not wrong to, be, to have initial fears to come against us. It's, what are we doing with these fears? What are we doing with these fears? Now, now uh, you know, some people are, are, are hoarding food out of their fear. They're hoarding things. They're doing things, you know. And and without Jesus, you know, come on, you know, you have to have a little bit of mercy. Don't don't get too judgmental of, of people that are overwhelmed with with some fear right now. Yeah. But but as as Christians, what do we do with it? We take it to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Jehoshaphat took his fear right to God initially and started to pray and seek the Lord. Yeah. 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 Come on. Amen. And. Uh, uh, so, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord, began and before the new court, and he said, now before we get into his prayer, notice how the nation itself turned to God because of the threat was beyond their power to be able to, to handle this, right? And I remember in nine in in 9-11, when that happened, uh, uh, right after the attack, um, the Twin Towers, the whole nation was, was really open. Their hearts were open to God. They were like, like Lord, we realize that we are vulnerable. We, we are, you know, without your protection, we are vulnerable. And people flooded into the churches the next Sunday. I just happened to be preaching that one Sunday. I, I, you know, I gave a salvation message and and, and people were saved that Sunday, and, and the church was filled. But then the next Sunday, there was less. The next Sunday after that, there was less. And then it was down to your faithful people that always come to church on Sunday. Like, what happened? What happened? You know, as soon as the threat was gone, 
And then people stopped seeking God. Yeah. In their hearts, they're, they're, they started to stop turning to the Lord. I want to tell you, do not stop turning to the Lord. Right. Once you make a decision to turn to Jesus, you, you want to keep on doing this thing. You want to keep on going for God. Because the blessings, okay, I'm going to be do a dad joke now. The blessings are out of this world. Okay. Okay, praise the Lord. So, so Joshua takes the Spirit of God. Listen to this, Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold, uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Now, listen to this prayer. In the prayer, Jehoshaphat said, Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there no power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel, and gave it to, to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwell in it, they have, they, and we have built you a sanctuary in it, your name, say, saying, and he's, he's quoting, he's quoting uh, Deuteronomy, and then he's, he's, he begins to quote what Solomon prayed, this prayer of Solomon. It says, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say, he's quoting the promise of God in his prayer. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they, but, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Because God, when they, were, when they were coming into the land, God says, now, you're not to touch the land of Edom. You're not to touch the land of Moab or the land of, of Amnon. That's their possession that I've given to them. Wow. So they, so they respected that. It said, it said uh, but here they are, rewarding us by coming to show... To, to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. I think this is great because there was no children's church. All, all the children, everybody came together to seek the Lord together. The little ones, the children... There was a prayer meeting, and they didn't say, the prayer meeting is only for adults. That's right. The prayer meeting was for everyone, young and old, all spectrums. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And they Amen. sought the Lord. But the important thing to, to realize here is, is, as Christians, when threats come, we, we remind ourselves of what the covenant is to us. We remind ourselves of the, 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 the promises of God in answering the prayer. When crisis comes, instead of feeding your fear, Amen. you feed your faith yeah, and on. starve your fear. Right. Yes, yes. Now, we, we're walking in wisdom. We need to do everything that they tell us to do to, to, uh, to mitigate the spread of, of, of a virus and, and protect the vulnerable. But beyond that, if you're still in fear, you need to feed your faith on the promises of the Lord. Okay? And... And uh, I like this, Exodus 15, 26. This was the, the covenant word to Israel and the covenant, because we are under the blessings of the, of the covenant as Christians. Uh, Jesus, uh, we are now part of the blessings of Abraham. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. He is Jehovah Rapha. He makes a difference between his covenant people and the Egyptians, his non-covenant people. We are his covenant people, Amen. so we are under the protection of the Most High. Amen. You remind yourself that he is in the in the Latin, that's Jehovah Jireh. In the in the Hebrew, it's it's Yahweh Hira. And forgive me if I'm not pronouncing the that correctly, but right, yes. you know, that's his name, his covenant name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. We remind the Lord. Why? Does he forget? No, we forget. 
It, he, God doesn't forget, but we need to remind, we need to speak it back to the Lord. Lord, your, your covenant says, your covenant says, and what your covenant says, and you said that you would hear our prayer. You said that you would, you would do what we're saying. I'm telling you, I, I love the fact, I've never seen so much prayer go up from the church as I have these days where people are standing against this threat. Amen. And I'm happy for that. Amen. I'm happy for that. Amen. So, let's keep going here. So after this prayer, so how does the Lord respond to this prayer? With a word. With a prophetic word. People are looking, God, answer me, God, answer me. God is trying to get something to, he gets a prophetic word. Let me tell you, the Bible is a complete prophetic word. Right. He's answering us with the word and trying to give us instruction. And so, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benina, the son of Jael, the son of, we're just going to skip all his descendants. And, uh, and he was a Levite in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Tomorrow, go against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Position yourselves. That's a good word right there. Keep yourselves positioned in faith. Keep yourself positioned by seeking the Lord. Keep yourself quoting the promises of God. Yeah. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Uh, tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Now, my wife, you know, she really watches a lot of YouTube videos, and I'm grateful for that because she finds stuff that I'm not really looking for a lot. And she'll, she'll show me these prophetic words. And, and now I get notifications because she's subscribed to different YouTube sites. So I get these notifications from these prophetic watchmen. And a lot of the prophetic words right now that are, that are going forth is that this thing is going to end uh, by, by Passover. Passover is, the, is when God's really going to put an end to this. Passover is the 8th of April. And that everything is going to start going back to normal by Easter, starting Easter. Mm. So those are the prophetic; those are the prophetic words that God that God is saying to us. Mm. So, so in the first place, so so now we have a choice. We listen to, you know, we, we know this thing's going to end soon. It's yeah. going to be over with. We have a choice either to to believe, and, and if it was just one prophet, that's one thing. But it's several saying the same things. Mm. Okay, over and over. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And I was greatly encouraged when I heard the president after that say that uh, uh, Easter he was going to restart to get people back to work and uh, start lifting some of these regulations and mandates and so forth. So I was like, well, that confirms what the prophets were saying. And the prophets were saying that before the president even, even mentioned anything about that. Also... The president of our of the United States, he called a national day of prayer. Yeah. Uh, that that I don't know it was the Sunday, fifteenth of March or something, which was prophetic, because the the prophets were saying that if the if the president called a national day of prayer, only if he did that would this end and and it would and our economy would be saved. Uh -huh. But if he didn't call a national day of prayer, then this there was going to be a lot of destructive and a lot of a domino effect of some bad things that were going to happen. Mm. Wow. And then when I heard the president declare a national day of prayer, I was like, wow, thank God. Oh, thank God. He hears from the Lord. He may not be a perfect man, and none of us are. But he, he was listening to the Lord on that one. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, come on. And whether you, you know, no matter whether you like our governor or our president or senators, we are obligated as Christians to pray for yeah. those who are in authority. Come on. That's right. To always pray for them. Yes. Right? No matter what your political affiliation is, yes, pray. Right. pray. 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 Yeah. We have power on our knees. And with our vote. Well, let's go on. So. <laughs> 
So Jehoshaphat, after this prophetic word comes up, did he mock it? Did he ridicule it? Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the, of the Korahites stood up to pray. They were the musicians. And they stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Yeah. So they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went out and Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Yeah. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Wow. Believe the Lord. Believe his spokesman. Believe those who are preaching the true word of God. Okay. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. His holiness is beautiful. Amen. Holiness is beautiful. Amen. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. This was the same song. I wish I knew the melody, but heaven does. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. This was the same tune. This was the same worship song they were singing when Solomon dedicated the temple. And they were responsibly singing, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And the smoke filled the temple of God. The presence of God started filling. The glory cloud came in. And the priests could not stand to minister anymore because of the glory cloud. I mean, some people are like, I wish that preacher would shut up. Well, pray for the glory. If the glory comes, then that preacher will shut up. And you can go home early. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> now, see, I, I wouldn't be able to say a joke like that. There wasn't a few people here. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, everybody's seen it. I'm blind. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, so, yeah. So, so here we go. So they began to sing and to praise the Lord, and the Lord set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah and were Jesus. defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they, they helped to destroy one another. Oh my gosh. So let me just say this. Our praise and worship this morning, I know, I know you, you couldn't be a part of it on, on camera, you know, at home, but our praise and worship just was so good. I mean, just those three songs, so sweet. And it's so good. When you all of a sudden pull yourself into praise and worship, Amen. pull yourself out of fear, let the peace of God rule. And you, get, you know what? I'm going to praise God anyways. I'm going to yeah. praise God with this threat of my lack. I'm going to praise God with this threat of not having a job. And God's going to provide me. I'm going to praise God with this. I'm going to praise God with that. God brings confusion into the camp of the enemy. God disrupts his plans and his schemes and his plots to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Because the presence of the Lord, his enemies scatter at his presence. Amen. And when we praise and worship the Lord, the presence of the Lord comes and the enemy scatters. Woo! Yeah, okay. That'll preach. And I did. So, so we'll keep going. Well, then when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness of the, of the multitude, and there they were all dead bodies, fallen to the earth. No one escaped. When Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoil... They found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Yeah. I just want to tell you, on the other end of this is spoil. On the other end of this is the spoil of the Lord. And one of the spoils is souls. We're going to spoil hell and populate heaven. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, God is resetting the church. He's resetting some things. He's turning things around. Now, before we turned our sanctuary around, you, you can't tell at home, but our sanctuary was on, on the other side. Our platform was on the other side. And we turned the church around. We did some remodeling. And the Lord spoke to my wife. We were in here praying. And, and the Lord said, I'm turning your church around. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, obviously there's levels of meaning there. Yeah. And, and, and then this reset happened, and we heard, listened to a word by Hank Kuhneman last night. He said, I'm, 
I'm turning the church around. Yeah. I'm resetting the church. How many knows we got we got to be shaken out of our religiosity? We got to be shaken out of our stupor. We got to shake, you know, you know, pretty pretty soon we we do things and, and we're just shoving our, our car into neutral and just coasting along uh, like a robot. You know, I go to church on Sunday, I read my Bible on Monday, blah, 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 blah. You know, blah, blah, I go to work, you know, I make my coffee in the morning. And we're just, we're just like robots, right? And every once in a while, God has to like, hey, hey. And we become religious without relationship, without a fresh infusion of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not glad that people are getting hurt, okay? But I, I do like the fact that there is some disruption that causes people to shake out of their normalcy. Because, because some, people, some people were on a highway to hell. They're on a, they're in a fast track. And something had to stop that and disrupt that and get somebody's attention. Now I'm not I'm not saying that God I'm not saying that you know God did this or blah 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 blah. I don't know. And I'm not glorying in the fact that some people are actually getting hurt. Right? But there's worse things than dying from a coronavirus. There is worse things than dying from a coronavirus. Eternity without God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay, so this last point here. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, for they were for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the place was called the Valley of of Baraka until this day. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for the Lord, his God, gave him rest all around. So this, this thing is, remember to give thanks. When we come out of this thing, some of you have lost jobs. God has better jobs. Some of you have lost money. God has restoration. And his restoration can be greater. Right? Whatever you've lost, God is able to restore. There's spoil on the other side of this in many dimensions. So, so praise the Lord. And God will give us rest and peace again. Amen. I just want you to know that we're here today. Because we love you and we recognize that the only thing that can really take you from this kind of fear is Jesus. And so we just want to offer to you today that opportunity to really know who the Lord and Savior is. So you might say, oh yeah, I know the man upstairs, but do you really know Jesus? Because we just want to release you from fear. And we want to release you into the eternity, the good eternity. And you know, there's room at the cross room at the cross. I heard this story by um, Reinhard Bonnke. He said uh, there was a cobbler, I believe it was in Germany, and he had this little girl and this cobbler, he, they, they work with shoes, so this would have been back in the probably World War II time, and the cobbler was very bitter against God, and uh, he just hated God. He would go to his church, or his uh, his store and he would walk past churches where they were singing about Jesus and oh, he was just so mad. But he had a little girl who had gotten uh, invited to Sunday school and she went to Sunday school and she was touched by Jesus. And she heard the song, there's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. And we just want to tell you this morning that there is room at the cross for you. Amen. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. Now, this is how you get to the cross. You bow your head with me and you just say, Jesus, Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I'm, I fall short. I don't do things right. 
I need you to come into my life. I need you to come into my heart and to make me right. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my spirit man and make me born again. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Now, if you said that prayer, we'll meet you in heaven. Hallelujah. And we love you. God bless you this morning. Yes. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this morning, for this church service. I ask you to bless your church. Bless all your membership. Let your face shine upon us and give us peace in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God